grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read from St. Matthew chapter 22. The focus on the words, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. We'll also examine the importance of the phrase from our epistle, our citizenship is in heaven. Heavenly citizenship. That is how Paul describes the Christian. Here again those words. Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. But what does this heavenly citizenship entail? What does it really mean as sons and daughters of Adam as we live and work and struggle here now in the midst of this earthly life? What does this heavenly citizenship mean for you? Does it change who you are? Does it change your relationship to your neighbor, to those who are in need around you? There really are two basic ways that Christians have traditionally looked at this question. One way is like this. I'm but a stranger here means that I am not a part of the world. It means I can blissfully ignore my neighbor in need and anyone and everything around me. I am a Christian. I am spiritual. I am above such trifles. The problem with this view, of course, is that it is simply not true. Heavenly citizenship doesn't mean we write off the earth as irrelevant or somehow beneath us. If that were true, why did Jesus come to earth at all? Why did God become man if we are really supposed to ignore or belittle the world, its inhabitants, and everything in it. Remember again those words from the creed we just prayed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. A part of what it means is that the Christian church must have her feet firmly planted right here, on earth <clears throat> and in the midst of the trials and difficulties and troubles that everything this life brings about. If we don't do this, if we don't have our feet planted here, then it is really tempting to try to escape. If we don't do this, we risk becoming so heaven-oriented that we actually forget that the church is here and now on earth. God became man. He entered into our world so that we are truly a part of it. Now, that's the first view. The second view of heavenly citizenship is that I can actually only think of things here below because it is too hard to understand and get a grip on this heaven thing. I know heaven is coming, we might say, but I don't really understand it. So I'm just going to worry about the here and now and not be overly concerned about what's coming. Because I can't see heaven, I'm going to try and create heaven on earth. Fix every wrong, make everything right here and now. Now in this view, the things of this life actually take on too much importance. We can start to get the idea that we are God, and that we are the ones that work here below, ordering everything according to his plan, that is, our plan. There are many churches the world over that have become so here and now focused that they lose the connection between taking care and serving the needs of today and 
taking care and serving the needs of the whole person, body, soul, and spirit, together. Churches that forget about heaven and eternal life have actually forgotten the very gospel itself. If all we can do is give people things for here and now, then we are really missing our identity. Remember again the words of St. Paul in Colossians. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. So then, if we aren't to be so heavenly focused that we forget life on earth, and if we aren't supposed to be so earthly focused that we forget our hope is in heaven, how do we actually live then as children of God here and now? We live and serve our neighbor not because we are trying to create heaven on earth. We live and serve our neighbor in love because heaven is our home. Think of it this way. God has given you all things. You are set to inherit eternal life where you will be changed from this sinful sack of flesh to a new glorious body, perfect in every way. What's more, you will be at peace. You will be at peace with God through the forgiveness of sins. You will be at peace with everyone because of what God has won for you and for them. And because you have this great eternal inheritance in heaven, <sighs> boy, is that a relief for our life. Here on earth. All of it begins now. We have hints at this, pointers and signs that lead us to this great mystery. Baptism, preaching, the Lord's Supper, absolution, all of these and more point to this great and beautiful reality that because God has done all these things for you, you are free to live here and now. You're free to enjoy the gifts that God gives to you. <coughs> gifts of family and life. Things of this world. But what's more, you are free to share those gifts with everyone around you. These gifts can be shared freely because, well, this is just the tip of the iceberg, friends. We don't have to be so stressed about every little bit of possession that we have because we have an eternal inheritance in heaven on the way. The Pharisees in our text wanted to track Jesus, to trip him up in this distinction, but our Lord doesn't stumble or falter. Never try to trap the word made flesh into words. He knows full well that we live in the world, that we are not of the world. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Give the world its due. If taxes, then taxes. If tribute, then tribute. If that means taking care of your neighbor more than it seems reasonable to you, do it anyway. Why? Because you also render to God what is his. And what is God's? You. You are God's. Body and soul, every bit. So come and feast on our Lord's body and blood. Live as free men and women. Give freely because Christ has freely given to you. Come, eat and live, and give everything of yourself because God himself will fill you up more than you can even imagine. Believe it for Jesus' sake.